Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of the now international Bible radio show, The Bomb of Gilead. I am your host, Brother Julius. Brother Will is on the road. And tonight, sisters and brothers, he's back by popular demand. One of your favorites and one of our favorites, the Israel of God's own, Brother Ray U. Ben. How you doing, Brother Ray? Hey, Brother Julius. Thank you, Brother. Thank you. I'd like to say off the top. I'm so blessed to be back and have another chance to be on the number one talk show, the Bible, the Bomb of Gilead. Thank you, brother. Let me thank you for letting me be here and thank God and another Jesus. And Jesus. Oh, man, Ray. Uh, we're so humble, brother. Praise God, man. Praise God and mm -hmm. praise the Israel of God for, uh, and, uh, for allowing us to do this platform. Yes. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. I've been watching that Brothers in the Vineyard. Praise and God. I am a huge fan. Praise God. I'm ready for my I'm ready for my brothers in the vineyard t-shirt, brother. Y'all working on that? We're working on that. We're getting close. We're coming closer. I just want to say the brothers been doing a beautiful job, man. And uh the jail man, all the other brothers. But hey, we trying to get like the Bob of Gilead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say greetings, sisters and brothers, to you all out there in the viewing audience and around the world. Um all the top fans, and for your continued support. I want to say peace and blessings to our affiliate all the way down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, Bethel House of God, and Pastor Johnson. Welcome, you guys, and coach, where there's a coach, there's a, where there's a team, there's a coach, and all the moderators, thank you for your continued support, Pastor Johnson, and a special, special thank you to those in Japan and Australia and United Kingdom and all over the world, sisters and brothers, and especially here in the United States. Thank you for your continued support. Brother Ray, yes. tell me what we got for tonight. Well, we're going to deal with a little thing called the will of God. Oh, man. The will of God, Julius, because it's time and uh, it's getting late in the game and we got to see what is God's will. Because I found out myself that my will did not cut it. <laughs> and I don't think y'all's will is cutting it neither, but we got to see what God's will is. That is right, my brother. That's right. Ray, yes. and as always, I want to shout, shout out to Team Bomb, all yes. the members of Team Bomb, and, and all of the Israel of God platforms and, and shows that are watching, and, and, and sisters and brothers, we're just about broadcasting seven, I think we are, seven days a week, right? Yeah, go to the Israel of God website. These all of our programs are Israel of God productions. So please yes. like, share, and post. Right, and we want to send a shout out to Brother Boy and thank him and uh, doing an excellent job. Lord be with him and continue to strengthen him and let him keep preaching that uncut word of God in Jesus' name. Shout out to my brother James Anderson. I had the great pleasure of Tuesday being on Sound Doctor Studio. Thank you again, Brother James. I love you, man, in Jesus' name. 
Yes. Ray, we always open up, you know the drill, Isaiah 61. Go verse ahead, son. One, two, and three. I want you to do, can you do that favor for me and read that, Ray? Yes, I can. Can you read that? I just want to hear that voice. I, I just want to hear that voice. Isaiah 61, verses one, two, and three. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to cover all that mourn and appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of those holy words. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Ray. Yes. The will of God. Let's go, brother. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Judas. Thank you. And I want to say uh, all to the listening audience, God bless you and keep you. And may we all continue in God's word, because that's how you can show the Lord that you love it. But now, you know, during this modern this uh, modern uh, day and end time we're really looking at, people say that, you know, well, you know, Ray, I serve God my way, and you serve God your way. And, you know, we go do it like this. I know what the books say, but I do it like this, because this is my own, I got a personal relationship with God. So we want to put to silence all of that kind of noise, people. Because I'm going to let you know in on a big secret. If we don't do it according to the will of God, we wasting our time. The Lord done told us in Matthew 7 chapter that these people said, Lord, Lord, not all of them that say, Lord, Lord, going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, brother. But those that do something, we're going to see what they got to do. Well, let's start this in James, the fourth chapter, brother. James 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Because the Lord letting you know, people, it's not our will. We got to be careful. Because, you know, our lifespan is not long enough to be, be claiming what we're going to do and what we ain't going to do. And yeah. sister, brother, we're going to try to get this done, but uh, uh, in a timely manner. If we go a little bit over, bear with us. It will be worth it. There's going to come a time where you're going to look for the word of God and, go, and not going to find it. So yeah. let's just get everything, let's get all this oil, sister and brothers, in Jesus' name. Ray. James 4 and verse 7. Let's go. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And this is a key, people. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. He's going to be right to always at your right hand to resist you, but rebuke him in the name of Jesus, and he'll flee from you. Go ahead and read. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Uh-huh. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. See, we can't be double man. We're going to do this today. We're going to serve God today, but we're going to do another thing tomorrow. You can't be double minded with the Lord because the Lord said a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yes, sir. But go ahead and read now. Verse 9 You afflicted, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to happiness. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Oh, so you got what you got to do in the sight of the Lord? You got to humble yourself. humble yourself. You can't do the things your way. You can't have your own ideas when it comes to the word of God. We got to humble ourselves to the word of God and let him lift us up. And this is what it's all about. But go ahead and read a little bit more, bro. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law. Uh-huh. And judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. And you have to ask yourself now, are you a doer of the law or are you a judge? Every time I look around, you judging somebody. You condemning somebody. The Lord said, look here, watch out. That judgment that you meet, it shall be measured unto you again. Ooh. Watch your judgment. Watch your judgment. But now, let's go see. We got to tap into the will of God. Let's see what he want us to do. Let's go to uh, Matthew's the sixth chapter now, Matthew 6. And let's see what the Lord told Matthew to write. Matthew 6, we're going to pick it up at verse 31. And we're dealing with the will of God. We're going to get our will out the way and see what God's will is. Matthew 6 and verse 31. And when you get it, Judas, go ahead and read. Therefore, 
take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whether it was all shall we be clothed? Now ain't that something? I mean, you know, Lord, you know you gotta have clothes and everything. You know you gotta try to get out there and work and provide for your family. He ain't talking about that. He's talking about something a little bit bigger. Go ahead and read. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Uh-huh. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Ain't that something? See, it's the Lord that's one that's giving you these things anyway. Because if he didn't wake you up and cause you to get to that job and take that breath out you. You couldn't do no, couldn't get a glass of water, let alone some clothes. But it's the Lord that's providing for you. But he said the Gentiles are seeking after this thing. But go ahead and read now. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh -huh. And all these things shall be added unto you. So that's what he really telling us, Julius. Seek the kingdom first. Teach me. And then all these other things will be added unto you. So the most important thing in our life is to seek that kingdom. No matter what you got going on, seek the kingdom first, the book said, and then all these other things will be added unto you. But read just a little bit more for me, brother. Take therefore no thought for, to, for tomorrow. Uh -huh. Tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Yes. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That's why we got to watch out for our will. We said we're going to do this and do that. But watch out because you don't know what tomorrow may bring forth, people. The Lord telling you to get through this day right now, this one, and deal with tomorrow when it get here, people, because it's enough evil in one day. Let's get past the evil that's in this day, and we'll deal with that evil that's dealing with it tomorrow. But let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's go to Proverbs 27, chapter. That's why we at Israel of God, we love the book, man. The book was talk. We got to let the book talk to us, man. And the Lord going to tell us exactly what to do. It's his will we need to be concerned with and not ours. My Proverbs, dad, come on in my room, said the book is the boss. That's what it is. That's what it is. We Shout got to mail the mark. Yes. Praise God. And that was an excellent statement. But Proverbs 27 and verse 1, Julius, what did it say now? Boast not thyself of tomorrow. What? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, Brother Ray. Go ahead. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And that is the truth. Because look here, we was all having good. We was living good. Everything was going great. And then Corona-19 popped out of nowhere in one day and messed up this whole world. Because we didn't have a clue that the Lord was going to drop that Corona thing, did we? We didn't know. Because you don't know what a day might bring forth. That's why you got to take this thing one day at a time. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2. Let another man praise thee and not die in thy own mouth. That's right. Go ahead. A stranger and not thy own lips. Go ahead. A stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. That's why you got to watch Woo. out. A fool's wrath but it's, it's heavier than them both. But now, let's get back. So don't boast yourself because of the mob. Get through this day. Take it one day at a time. I mean, you know, you look to the future trying to make plans, but you've got to say if it be God's will. Yes, so sir. If it ain't his will, it ain't coming down. Let yes, me see what you're talking about. Let's go to, back to James, the fourth chapter now. James 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 13. James 4 and 13. But these are things the servant of God should know. Please. He should have this on his mind all the time. Yes, sir. Even Jesus was on the cross. He said, Lord, forgive them for they not. They don't know what they do, but he told the Father, look, let this come past with me. He said, but not my will, but thy will be done. Yes, sir. Rick. That's what we got to get with the will of the Lord. James 4 and 13 this time. What did it say, brother? It says, mm, go to now, ye that say tomorrow, or, or tomorrow we will go into such a city. Uh -huh. And continue there a year, and buy, and sell, and get gain. That's right. They, they talk way up the road. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We gonna, But let's see what the Lord said. Go ahead. Whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow. You don't know. Go ahead. But what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished it away. That's why we can't make too little plans, man. Because your life is like a vapor. It, it's like a, it'll, it'll be here and gone tomorrow, man. It'll vanish away. If it, if, if it be through God's will, we're going to do this here. Go ahead and read. Oh, my goodness, Ray. Mm. Verse 15. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Yes, sir. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Oh, so when you boast in the mind, you're going to do this and do that way up the road. The book called it evil, man. 
You got to call it the will if, if it be God's will. Go ahead and read. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do it to not, to him it is sin. Ain't that something? And we got to stay away from that sin because the wages of sin is what, Julius? Death. And that's what we're trying to avoid. But now let's go to Amos, the third chapter now. Let's see what this Lord, the Lord is talking about, his will. Because he said, look here, don't boast. Don't make no thought for tomorrow. Get through the day because there's enough evil in one day. Amos 3. Brother Ray, Jesus yes. said, our time is always. That's right. That's why your life is a paper. Job said, man that's born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He coming forth like a flower and is cut down. Ain't that something? Man. He cut down. He just like the grass today, here today, and gone tomorrow. Oh, man. But Amos 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. What did he say now? Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O oh, you children of Israel. Uh-huh. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Go ahead. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Because him that know to do good and do of it not, to him it is seen. Yes, sir. The Lord gave us the oracles, which are the answers of God. We yes. knew what to do, but we didn't do it, brother. He said, look here, out of all the families of the earth, only you have I known, O Israel. Go ahead and read. Can two walk together except they be agreed? They can't do it. Go ahead. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? No. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Nothing, no. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Go ahead. Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? No, because you got to put some kind of thing that's going to trap him, something in there that he won't. That's how you can catch it. But if you don't put nothing in the trap, you're going to have an empty trap day and night. But look what he said, though. This is what we're getting down to. Go ahead. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and, and the people not be afraid? Go ahead. Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? What? So when evil comes in the city, who did it? The Lord. The Lord did it, people. This we read this, way. That's right, because he is sick of our disobedience. The Lord said he angry at the wicked every day. But go ahead and read now. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his service, the prophets. So you want to get with the will of God? The Lord just told us one thing. If you want to know what the Lord's will is, go and check the prophets. You want to learn the secrets of God, where are they at? With the prophets. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Finish a little bit more. The lion has roared. Who would not fear? Go ahead. The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Yes, sir. And you got to do his will and not your will. We can't serve God how we think in our own mind and do what we want to do. We got to get with that will of God. Now, let's go to Micah, the second chapter. See, the thing is, you're going to do it by willingly or you're going to do it by force. Because the Lord said every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Yes, sir. But now, Amos, uh, Michael 2 and verse 3. Michael 2 and verse 3. And when you get it, Jews, go ahead and read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, against this family do I devise an evil. The Lord brought the evil. He brought what family he talking about? Israel. Israel. From which you shall not remove your necks. Go ahead. Shall you go heartily, for this time is evil. And if you don't believe it, just look around you, people. This is evil from one end of the earth to the other. But go ahead and read, brother. In that day shall one take up a parable against you. Uh -huh. And lament with the dole for lamentation. Go ahead. And say, we be utterly spoiled. He go. has changed the portion of my people. Yes. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he has divided our fields. Lord took our fields, cast us out of our land, and scattered us all over the earth. Why? Because of disobedience. But go ahead and read now. Therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a core by lot go in ahead. the congregation of the Lord. Oh, man. Go ahead. Prophesy ye not, say they to them that prophesy. Go ahead. They shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. Uh-huh. O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? See, no, that is your doings. That's not the Lord's doing. That's not his will. When we sin against the Lord, breaking the Sabbath, all the Ten Commandments, and keeping the feast days, eating the 
breaking the diet every law. Go ahead and read. Do not my word do good to him that walketh uprightly. Oh, so if you're walking uprightly, that word going to do good for you. He don't care who you is, man or a woman. If you're keeping that word, it's going to do good to them that rock up white. Because you know why? That's his will. But now, let's go to 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter now. Man, Ray. And sisters and brothers, if you're just joining us, you are listening to Brother Ray you Ben bring the Lord's will. Praise the Lord God of Israel in Jesus' name. Man. And we are on our way to 1 Timothy 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 1. Okay, when you get it, Judas, go ahead and read. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Uh-huh. Let the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. That's right. So you got to do and keep your walk to walk and talk to talk so the word of God will not be blasphemed. But go ahead and read. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. This is what the Lord wants you to teach. Honor the elders because they laboring in the word. They putting the work in. They laying their life on the line. They teaching that gospel so that we might get eternal life. Yes, sir. This is the blessing of your elders. But now, read a little bit more. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strikes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, Railings, evil surmisings. Ain't that some? He said, but you got to seek wholesome words. You got to seek the words of the Lord Jesus. This is the will of God. Yeah. And do what he had written in his word. Because he told you he would do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants and prophet. But he said, don't be proud. If you acting like this, you kicking against the word, you proud and you don't know nothing, he said. And doubting about question and strive and evil surmises. Keep reading. Verse perverse, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Ooh. And destitute of the truth. Ray, destitute of the truth. What do you ain't got no truth in you nowhere? Go ahead. Supposing that gain is godliness. What? From such, withdraw thyself. See, withdraw yourself from these guys. All they talk about is money, 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 money. That's all they want. And look, the Lord said he's going to tell you about this money. Keep reading. I ain't got to tell you. We're going to read what it says. Go ahead. But godliness with contentment is great gain. That's right. Be content is what, what you got. Go ahead and read. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And that's real. But this ain't telling you don't strive to be the best you can be and get everything the blessing the Lord got for you. But always do with Matthew. The Lord told Matthew, seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. What? Go ahead. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, right? Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Ain't that something? See, this is why you want you to seek the kingdom. Because if you're seeking that money, if you don't watch yourself, you're going to drown yourself in destruction and perdition. Double destruction. Go ahead and read. Oh my goodness. For the love of money is, again, the love of money is the root of all evil. So it ain't the money, it's the love of the money. Yes. Go ahead and read. For, for which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And that's what you do, man. That's what your riches will do. They'll pierce you through with many sorrows. It means you'll do anything together. you hurt anybody. And then at the end, you'll be a fool and won't have nothing. The book text. He that get his riches and not by right till in the end be his food, and the Lord gonna destroy him. But this is what the man of God is supposed to be singing. This is the will of God. Keep reading. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. 
lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Yes, sir. But the man of God, he wants you to follow righteousness, godliness, faith. Love, yes. weakness, yes. all of these things is what this is God's will. This yes. is what He wants to do. This is how we can show that we serve in God. This yes. is the will of God, not our will, but God's will. But now let's go a little further. Let's go to Romans, the 12th chapter. Hmm. Teach Ray, teach the book. We're just looking to see what the books say about this man because we're getting caught up in our own religion. We're trying to Create God in our image instead of doing what he said do. And, and, and Brother Ray and sisters and brothers out there, think about it. When the last time you seen a television minister that you see on television every Sunday speak these types of words? Be honest. Man, you ain't going to say because they ain't dealing with the book, man. Remember, people, we read this. This is for our good. That's why the book said he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. Yes, sir. But now Romans 12 and verse 1, Brother Judas, what did it say? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, right? That's right. You ain't doing no big thing because you serving God. This is your reasonable service. And then he said the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep, and his, keep his commandments. This is the whole duty. This is a reasonable service. Go ahead and read. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what we're supposed to be dealing with, people, that good and that acceptable, perfect will of God. That's what, And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, people. Get away from all this worldly foolishness. Start keeping the commandments of God, seeing what the prophets say so you can find the secrets, and you'll know exactly what God's will is, what he wants you to do. But wait, what if I want to party and party and party? Hey, the Lord said that it's better for the man, a man to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men. But when you party, you can't learn nothing, man. You ain't getting no understanding. You ain't growing in the spirit of knowledge when you party. If you go mess around, and like I'm saying, ain't nothing wrong with party, but everything has got its proper place. You yes, understand sir. what I'm saying? But yes, in this sir. world, they put party in before knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's when you're going wrong. But now, let's see what the book say now. Let's go to, uh, skip down to verse 16, because we got to prove what that acceptable and perfect will of God is. Skip down to verse 16. What did it say? Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. That's right. Don't be wise in your own conceits because the wisdom is the Lord's. And he gave the word. But we got to tap into it so we can do the will of God and be confident that we serve in God because we're doing exactly like he said according to his word. But now, let's go a little further. Let's Go to Mark, the third chapter, Mark 3. That's all we need. The Lord left us everything in this word. We don't have to guess. We don't have to speculate. If we want to do the will of God, all we got to do is open up the book and read. The prophets is what it's going to tell you, and the testimony is going to come back and testify what the prophets have already spoken. But now, hmm. Mark 3 and verse 31. What did it say? Mark 3 and 31. There came then his brethren. And his mother, and standing without, said unto him, calling him. And the multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. Uh huh. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked around about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, there it is, right? The same is my brother and my sister and mother. That's who's going to do the will of God. That's who his mother and his brothers and his sisters is. He is. Who is it? They that do the will of his father. Praise the Lord. And if you're doing the will of God, then you are Jesus and his family, people, because you're keeping 
his will. Praise we the Lord, Lord, Lord. My brother and my sister and my father. But now, let's look at something now. Let's go to, uh, uh, let me see, that was 35, right? Okay, let's go to Matthew 7 right quick. Matthew 7. Yes, sir. This is why I'm telling you, people, you have to do it the way the Lord wants you to do it. You have to do his will. Because look what he told these people right here. You do not want to be in this number. Uh, Matthew 7 and 21 now. Let's see what the Lord said to these people. Go ahead and read. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Who gonna get in there? The one that did the will of his Father. He don't care how many times you call his name, Lord, Lord, Lord. He said, why call it me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Yeah. This is what the Lord is talking about. He said, "Not read that again, you, because we want them to hear that. Go ahead and read. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Yes, sir. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Go ahead. And then what I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Because you know why? They did it their way and not the Lord's way. Ain't that something? Man. This is the thing that we got to watch out for. That's, that's scary. Why, that's why it's so important to do what the Lord's will is, people. Because these are the ones that's going to enter into God's kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? But look, let's take a look at it one more time. Let's go over to uh, Matthew 15 right now. Matthew 15. And uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 15 and 1. Okay, when you get it, Jews, go ahead and read. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands, but when they eat bread. Go ahead. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? That's right, because the tradition of men transgresses the commandments of God. Which one are you going to deal with, the will of God or with the will of man? Mm. Go ahead and read. For God commanded, saying, honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die to death. Now that's what the book say. Go ahead. But you say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Uh -huh. In other words, hey, if you're taking care of your people and your mother and father in their old age and you ain't supposed to honor them no more, that's what you're saying because you're taking care of them. Now, no, the Lord didn't put no condition and no uh, statute of limitation on that. He said, honor your mother and your father. And in Leviticus 19, I think he said that you're supposed to fear your mother and father. Yes. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. And and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Go ahead. Now, have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition? Because you're doing your will and not the will of God. But go mm. ahead and read. You hypocrites, where did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, this people draw near unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Go ahead. But in vain they do worship me, Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Ain't that some? This is what he said, Lord, Lord, did not we cast prophesy in that name? Did not we cast out devil? He said, get thee from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Because yes. all of that time, you've been worshiping the Lord in vain. And that vain thing's for nothing, people. You don't want to get right to the throne, to the throne. And the Lord tell you to get away from me. I never knew you. You want to fix this thing and get it together now before the Lord come, people. Mm. This is the time to get our houses in order and humble ourselves before the Lord. And all you got to do is start doing his will according to the word of God. Yes, That's sir. You become a son and a daughter of God. But now, let's go a little further. Uh, let's go to Romans the 10th chapter. Romans 10 now. Bring it, Ray. Teach the book, brother. Hey, man, we just looking to see what the book say, man. And once we understand this will, then we know what we got to do. We don't have to guess. You don't have to ask nobody. I wonder if I'm serving God. Hey, you know if you're serving God or not. If you if you are, you're doing his will. And if you're not, you ain't concerned with the will of God. 
Romans 10 and verse 1, what did he say now? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Yes, sir. We got that same prayer. When you look at your brothers and sisters in the street, oh, you be saying, Lord, I hope the Lord can save them. Go ahead and read. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Oh, so they got a zeal. They want to serve God. I mean, they up every Sunday jumping and shouting. They want to serve God, but they ain't got no knowledge. This is what the hindrance is because they as doing they will and not the will of God. But go ahead and read. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And I could have really said they have not submitted themselves unto the will, will of God. Man. Because they doing their own thing. They going after traditions of men. This is why you got to read this book, people. The Lord is telling his servants what to do. Follow me. Do my will. Keep my commandments. And you will be blessed. It's just that simple. But let me show what that quote came from. It came from Isaiah 48. Let's go look at it. This is what Paul was quoting in Romans. Let's go take with it. I take a look at it. Isaiah, uh, <clears throat> Isaiah 48 and 1. We're just going to read 1 and 2, brother. Jews, and then we're going to go fuck. We're just trying to see that quote that Paul made in Romans 10. Uh, 48, 1, and 2. And when you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and I come forth out of the waters of Judah, uh -huh. which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. So they doing it their way. And they have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. This is what Paul was quoting in that Romans 10. But read too. What did it say? For they called themselves of the holy city and stayed themselves upon the God of Israel. Uh huh. The Lord of hosts is his name. They stay on the God. But we act like we ain't never sinned against the Lord, people. This is why we in captivity. Because we were doing our own will and not the will of God. To die, Ray. This is what's wrong with our people, and we still do it until this day. But let's see how who is the man that the Lord is going to look to. Let's go to Isaiah 66 and take a look at it. Who is the one that the Lord is going to look for or he's going to look to to give his word? Let's see who's going to be. Isaiah 66 and verse 1. 66 and 1. Okay, when you get it, you just go ahead and read. My God, read. Thus said the Lord. The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Go ahead. For all those things have my hand made, and all those things have been with the Lord. Go ahead. But to this man will I look, even to him that is a poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. That's the one the Lord is going to look to, man. The one that fear and tremble about his word. I mean, you be scared to do anything. You just want to do the will of the Lord. That's when that fear of God then sit in on you real tough. You be so scared, you feel like this. Verse 3, what did he say? He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. Hey, you know the Lord, if you slew an ox and you think you done kill a man, you be so afraid. But go ahead and read. He that sacrificed a, a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. Go ahead. He that offered an oblation, as if he offered swine's blood. And you know you ain't going to offer no swine's blood on the altar of God. No. You'll be afraid to do that. That's the way you're supposed to be afraid of the Lord. You're supposed to be so afraid that you don't eat no swine, because he told you don't eat that swine. And don't offer it on his sacrifice, on his altar as a sacrifice. But he said this man that he going to look to is afraid. He going to be scared. He going to watch his still because he know the Lord is watching him. But look, look what they do now. Uh, but uh, read that verse 4 and then we're going to go further. Let's see what they did. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Go ahead. Because when I called, none did answer. What? When I called, none did answer. Go ahead. When I spake, they did not hear. Oh, my God. Go ahead. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Oh, so they didn't choose the will of the Lord, did they, brother? They chose that which the Lord don't delight in. He called them and they didn't answer. He tried to get them to come to him, but he wouldn't. But let me give you an example of what he's talking about. Let's go to Proverbs, the uh, 
first chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 23. Proverbs 1 and 23. But this is, the Lord been calling us for a long time. He told, look, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. If any man will open unto me, I and my father will come in and sup with it. He'll come in and feed you that good word of God. He'll tell you what his will is. He don't have no problem letting you know what he wants you to do. And if you do it, you are serving of God. Go ahead, dude. You got something to say? No, no. I'm, 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 just, I'm just listening, brother. I'm in full agreement. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Proverbs 1 and 23. What does it say, dude? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because that's his will, his word of God. He's going to pour his spirit out. He's going to make known his word because his word, they are spirit and they are light. Yes. Go ahead and read, brother. Because I have called and you refuse. What? I, yes, I called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Go ahead. But you have set at not at all my counsel and with none of my reproof. Oh, my God. And then we turn around and say, we're doing God's will. Go ahead and read. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear coming. Because if you ain't keeping God's will, when you get in trouble, he say he's going to laugh at you. He's going to be laughing at you when your calamity come upon you. Because why? Why he going to do it? Keep reading. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come up upon you, go ahead. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. What? They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why, Judas? Why? For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Oh my God. They didn't go with the will of the Lord. Go ahead and read. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Go ahead. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. This is why we suffering so bad right now, brother. Because we don't want to hear none of the Lord's reproof nor his instruction. The Lord said a wise man will hear and will yes. in learning. But fools despise wisdom and not. And you have to ask yourself, which one am I? But keep reading, Julius 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. When you turn the the Lord, of the fools shall destroy them. Go ahead. But whoso hearkeneth to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So what Praise we gonna, what are we going to choose? The will of God or the will of man? Oh this is what you have to ask yourself. But now, let's go to Second Chronicles 20. Second Chronicles 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Second Chronicles 20. But we're just showing this all over the book, people. You shouldn't have no problem knowing what the will of the Lord is. All you got to do is pick up the book and read it. It's going to let you know exactly what to do and exactly not what to do. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 7. What did it say, Julius? What did it say? Are not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel? Uh huh. And gave us to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever? Yes, sir. And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, Go ahead. If when evil come up upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. That's what we got to do. And if you do that, that's when the help is going to come to you, people. You got to face Jerusalem. The Lord already got the place set up. He's where he placed his name forever. He said, if pestilence come upon you, famine, anything, he said, he'll be called. You face the room and call on his name. He'll be there to help you. Ain't that something? Pandemic, way, Even in pandemic? In the pandemic, he'll be right there. Because, see, this is what kind of mindset the servants of God are supposed to have. Let me share this with you, dude. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20. Yes, sir. This is the kind of mindset you want to be in because the book tells us in Jude that we got to, uh, uh, you know, be turned to the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Let's see what kind of faith that the saints had. Let's go to Deuteronomy. This is when uh, Israel was going out to war, and the Lord told them something that really gave me some strength. And I hope it do the same thing for you. Uh, Deuteronomy 20 and verse 1. And when you get it, just go ahead and read. When oh. thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, 
and see his horses and chariots and a people more than thou? Be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when you are come near unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. Now the priest getting ready to come and hold up. The priest coming to speak to the people. Let's pay attention to see what the priest told them before they go out to battle. Go ahead and read. And shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Go Lord ahead. your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. That's what you should have on your mind, people, when you're going out to battle. Thank you, Jesus. When you, that's right. When you're going out to war, when you leave out your house in the morning after you say your prayer to the living God, you are going to the battle. Hey, you ain't fighting a physical enemy, but you're fighting a spiritual enemy. Yes, and, sir. And, but the enemy that you really fighting and the worst guy that's really trying to cut you off, you know who it is, is you. You've got to watch yourself and watch your surroundings, people. But don't be afraid. Don't yes. tremble. Don't even fear. Don't, because why? The Lord said, if God be with you, then who can be against you? That if is you right. Follow of that which is good, who will harm you? This is what he's telling you, people. The Lord is with you. But you got to keep his commandment. You got to do his will. You got to do what he said. Get rid of what you think and what you think you know. The Lord said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in the field to where a man, if he find it, he sell him all that he have and buy that treasure, man. You got to get this treasure, people. This is God's will. This is what he wants his service to do. Not your own will and not your own way. Your own way will destroy you. Surely, if you ain't learned nothing else, if you've got to be about 30 or 40 years old, you know that your way has messed you up a lot of times. Yes. Say, Man, why did I do that? Because that was your way. And that was the wrong way. Because the book said there's a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. That's what you got to watch out for, people. But let's go a little further now. Let's go to St. John 15. St. Like, John. Like, share, and post. Sisters and brothers, watch this lesson again and again. Praise the Lord. Praise God, Brother Ray. Praise God. St. John 15 and verse 9, Brother Julius. St. John 15 and verse 9. What does it say? What does it say? It says, Brother Ray, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Yes. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. You're looking at the will of God, Julius. Go ahead and read. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Go ahead. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Go ahead. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Uh-huh. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Also, when you're doing the will of God, you become greater than a servant. You become a friend of God, just like your father Abraham was. Yes. Abraham, the friend of God. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Let's see what the Lord do for his friends. Keep reading. 15. Henceforth, yeah. I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Ain't that something? That's what he do to his friends. He let his friends know exactly what he yes, doing. Yes. Because he loved them. Why? Because they continue in his word. Yes. They keep his commandments. And that is how you abide in the love of God, people. Yes, sir. If you do that, the Lord is going to be right there with you. He told you in Hebrews 13, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Therefore, you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. Hey, that's not, this is what the book says now. But now, read just a little bit more, Brother Julius. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Ain't that beautiful? But now, look here. Let's go a little further. Let's go to 1 John 2. Oh, Brother Ray. Brother Ray, this is fire right here, brother. Hey, this is what we need, man. This is what we need. 
First John 2, we need the will of God. We need to obey them commandments. And then he said, you can ask what you want, and the Lord will give it to you. Man. Hey, First John 2 and verse 5, what did it say, brother? First John 2 and 5. But whoso keepeth his word in him barely is the love of God perfected. Go ahead. Hereby know we that we are in him. Uh, this is how we know if we know he, if we keep his word. Yes. If we keep his word, his love is going to be perfected in us. Go yes. ahead and read. He that said he abided in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. Uh huh. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. This is the will of God. Go ahead, brother. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which which thing is true in him and in you, because uh -huh. the darkness is past and the true light now shining. Ooh, the true light is shining, Julie. The true light is shining, Julie. It's God's will. It's time to do the will of God. The light is shining. It's always been shining. Go ahead and read. He that said he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. Yes, sir. Go ahead. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Go ahead. But he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. And when you ain't walking in the will of God, people, that darkness will blind your eyes and you don't know where you walk. You be so drunk off of false doctrine, you think you're doing right, but you dead wrong. You're dead wrong. See, that's that's darkness, man. That is spiritual drunkness. When you think you're doing the right thing, but you're not even in the ballpark. You're not even in the vicinity. Not less long the ballpark. But listen, we got to continue on in his word, first John 4 and 16. Come on, dude. We on the road. We finna do this thing. We're gonna look and see what the book say now. We can't get thrown away from our focus, which is the word of God and the will of God. First John 4 and 16. What does it say, brother? And we have known and believed that God that the that the, the I'm gonna read that again, Ray. I gotta calm down. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. This is our will. This is the Lord's will. He wants us to love one another, people. Look around. It ain't no love on the news. We killing both people that I've ever seen in my life, even the little ones. And I'm going to tell you, people, I'm trying to get together a lesson. I'm asking the Lord called, don't kill and especially don't touch the innocent blood. And we're going to get them getting it to you. The Lord almost gave it to me. But 17th verse, what does it say, Julius? Herein is our love made perfect. Go ahead. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Go ahead. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because if you be walking in that word, who is you afraid of? If God be with you, who can be against you? Brother? That is right. That's what the book said. Go ahead and read. Because fear has torment. Yes. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Uh-huh. We love him because he first loved us. Go ahead. If any man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? Oh, man. But what if I say I love God you and I hate my wife? Love, liar. What if my wife says she loves God, but she hates me? You liar. 20 verse, what did it say? If any man say, again, I love God and hated this brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? 21. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. This is what it is, people. This is God's will. People tell them, do this, we're going to do that. But you're going to do, you want to know what the will of God is? His Ten Commandments. Yes, sir. His word by, he sent by the prophets, his secrets. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. I got to watch it again four more times, Ray. Hey, brother, it's the word of God, man. Let it grow and add to it, Judas. Add to it as you go. 
Because it ain't no end to the word. It's infinity. I'm looking at my brothers and sisters in the street being shot down, Ray. Chicago um, become the murder capital of the United States. What's going on, brother? Hey man, ain't no love. The love of many has waxed cold, just like that Matthew 24 say, man. Earthquakes and dying place. Wars and rumors of war. Pestilence. Famine. Hey, man, if you can't see that the word ain't coming to pass, I mean, what do you need? But as we go on, you're going to know it's the word of God and not the word of man. But now, uh, Isaiah 46 and 3, 46 and 3, what does it say, Julian? Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, go which ahead. are carried from the womb. Go ahead. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to whore hairs will I carry you. Ain't I have something? made. Go ahead. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. Praise Ain't God. You. This is the one that's with you. This is why we got to do his will. He's been there with you since the womb. I will bear. I will carry. I will deliver. Did we read that in Ezekiel? That 20? Exodus 20? I'm going to say well, Deuteronomy 20. That's what it was. But first verse, read that fifth verse. What did it say? To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? Who is you going to compare to the Lord that you may be like, people? This is what the Lord is letting you know. But let's see who this is. Back up to Isaiah 45. Let's see who this is. Isaiah 45, and let's pick it up at verse 18. Isaiah 45 and 18. What does it say, brother? For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it. He created it not in vain. Yes. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Oh, uh, ain't no, and so ain't no other God but the Lord God of Israel. I'm talking about Jesus and the Father. It's one God, but it's two members that make up the God here. Yes. But keep reading, brother. What did he say? I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. Go I, ahead. the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. That's why we got to do his will. He's giving us the right thing. Go ahead and read. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? But skip down to verse 22 and continue. Now, in verse 21, what did it say? Tell ye and bring them near. Yeah, let them take counsel together. Who have declared this from ancient time? Who have told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me? A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Ain't none beside Jesus. What he let you know, people, he doesn't declare. He doesn't declare the end from the beginning. This is the will of God. But go ahead and read now. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. Uh-huh. For I am God and there is none else. Who is this talking? Go ahead and read. I have sworn by myself. The word is going out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Go ahead, brother. But Surely, now, only the one say, in the Lord have I righteousness and yes. strength. Yes, yes. We got righteousness and strength in the Lord. That's the only place we can get it from. But now, let's go and see who that was talking. Let's go to Philippians, the second chapter now. This is the God that done told you everything. He everything, Ray. He didn't speak everything, to sisters and brothers. He called laid it from me. the beginning. From the beginning, he laid it out. Philippians 2 and 5. Philippians 2 and 5. Let's see what the book say. Go ahead and read it, Judah. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Uh-huh but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Yes, he was. Go and ahead. being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, Ray, and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. And see, that's what we got to do. We got to be obedient. Even some of us might have to be obedient unto death, just like Jesus was. And But let's see what happened if you do that. Keep reading. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Every name. Go ahead. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow 
of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes, sir. This was that God that was speaking in Isaiah 45, people. This is the one that have cried the end from the beginning. This is the one that have bared you from the womb all the way to your hoary head. This is the one who will that we want us to do. But he gave us a message in this 12th verse. Read that 12th verse, Julie. What did he say? Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ooh. But how can you do that if you don't know the will of God? You how can't can you work out your own salvation. But now quickly, let's go to Ephesians, the first chapter. Mm. Ephesians, the first chapter, brother. Praise and, the Lord God of Israel for this lesson. In Jesus' name. God. In Jesus' name. Ephesians 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12, Ephesians 1 and 12. What did he say, brother? What did he say? That we should be to the praise of his glory. Yes. Who first trusted in Christ. That's what you got to trust in. Go ahead. In whom you also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth. What? You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you, after that you believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Yes, sir, because if you repent and be baptized, you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then the gift of the Holy Ghost is understanding the word of God. Go ahead and read. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That's right. It's an earnest. It's like you buy a house, you put that earnest money down. Peace, Ray. It's yours until you complete the deal and the closing, and that's when it's yours. Peace, Ray. It's earnest of the Spirit. We've got to hold on to it until the end so we can finish this journey that the Lord got us on by doing his will. But yes. keep read now. 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Yes. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's what he wants you to have. That's that Holy Ghost coming up on you. The spirit of wisdom and knowledge and revelation of him. This is God's will, people. Go ahead and read that. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Yes, sir. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is why we can't serve God our way. This is our way is wrong. This is the right way. Keep reading. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Go ahead. Which he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Go ahead and read, brother. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. You mean to tell me you don't want to follow this guy right here? You can't follow him. His name is greater than every name that was named, not in this world, but also in that which is to come. This is book, right? This is his book. And this is where we got to deal with. Finish that out, Judah. Finish that out. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. He's filling all in all. Let's go to Galatians 4, chapter, man. Quickly, quickly, Galatians 4. But this is our God's will, people. This is what we have to deal with. This is what's going to make us grow. This is what's going to heal us. This is what's going to teach us and lead and guide us. His will, not our will. Galatians 4 and 1, what did it say, Judas? Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differing nothing from a servant, yes. though he be Lord of all, uh -huh. but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. See, when you come to this world, you got to be up under tutors and governors and get taught just like Jesus did. And when you get taught, that's when he's going to let you out and let you do some teaching. But you got to get that will of God first. You got to get taught that word. You got to be a tutor and governor. Go ahead and read. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Go ahead. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. 
Go ahead. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Because this is the way the Lord get his children through adoption. Teach. He adopted you. He said he the soul went forth to sow, and some seeds fell by the wayside. Yes. Fell uh fell among stony places. Some fell among thorns and some fell on good ground. This is the ground we want to fall on. We want to receive the adoption of sons. But how are we going to be a son? Remember now, we will be a servant when you start off and then after a while you become a friend and yeah. then after that you are a son of God. Graduation, where you graduate. This is what it is, people, and what we can't do without the will. I'm going to be a brain surgeon, but I never read the book. I just lay on the couch. And then I get to be a white robe and walk up in the hospital. You gonna let me cut on you? Absolutely not. Well, no, because you gotta be in the tutors and governors for the time appointed of the father. Make it plain. Sixteen, Saint John sixteen and seven, Julius. We trying to get out of here now. Saint John sixteen and seven. If we move it too fast, sisters and brothers, write these scriptures down. Yes. Write them down. Saint John sixteen and oh Ray, oh how I love thy law. Yes, it is my delight all through the day, brother. St. John 16 and verse 7. What does it say, Jude? What does it say? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He go, and who is this comforter? He is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Go ahead and read. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. Uh huh. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Go ahead. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Go ahead. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Because when you first come into this thing, you can't bear the heavy and the media things right off the top. You got to be weaned from the milk of the breast. Yes. And be drawn from the milk. Be the sincere milk of the word of God, but go ahead and read 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. This is the will of God, people. The Holy Ghost gonna come right to you, and he gonna. Bring back to remembrance everything. He going to lead and guide you in the all truth. This is why you ain't got to deal with your will. The Lord have already laid this thing out. All he don't you to do is follow him according to his word. And he going to send everything that you need. But let's give you an example how the Lord is sending that Holy Ghost on you. Let's go to Daniel 9 and 20. Daniel 9 and 20. We're trying to walk up out of here now. We're almost home. Hold on a little bit longer. Daniel 9 and 20. Mama Gilead bonus, sisters and brothers. Jesus brother, brother, the word of God. The word of God. You said it right, brother. Man. Daniel 9 and 20. Here's an example how the Holy Ghost can come up on you. Now, let's see what happens. Go ahead and read. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. While, while I was speaking in prayer. Even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Ain't that something? Daniel was calling on the Lord and wanted to know a thing, and the Lord sent that Holy Ghost. But who was that Holy Ghost? Gabriel. Gabriel. But keep going. 20 seconds. What did he say? And he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. And that's what that Holy Ghost will do, people, when he show up on you. He's going to give you what? Skill and understanding, brother. Understanding, people. And this is what we need. God is a God of knowledge, and by him, actions are weighed. Yes, book. sir. But now, let's go see another. Let's go to Daniel 10 now. Daniel 10 and verse 8 now. Daniel 10 and 8, what did he say now? Therefore, I was left alone. And saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my calmness was turning me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Because boy, when them angels fall up on you, you're gonna pass out and do everything. It's gonna shake you up. You ain't gonna be laying up on the couch like, yeah, one of them angels come by and talk with me. Hey, he show up, you're gonna be on your head and, and hollering and screaming. Don't kill me, Lord. But go ahead and read. 
Yeah, yeah, it heard out the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I uh, in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. Boy, that, that sounded like he was shook up, brother. Go ahead and read. Let's see what happened at Holy Ghost Vision. Go ahead. And behold, the hand touched me, which set me up on my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Go ahead. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. Cause he, who sent him? Jesus. Because he is the one that he said it is fitting for me that I go. Because if I go not away, the comforter cannot come unto you. But what did he come to do? Skip down to verse 21. What did he say? But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Oh, that's what he came to show him. What was yes, sir. the scriptures of truth? Go ahead. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Ain't this something? But this is how the Lord is singing that Holy Ghost. But now, let's go to First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. We almost out here. We got four more scriptures, Judah. Can we make it? Can we make it with four we more? We're going to make it, brother. First Thessalonians 4, we're going to pick it up. We're going to make one. it, brother. Oh, my goodness, Ray. What, what? Such knowledge, brother, Ray. Hey, it's come straight from the Lord, man. Straight from the Lord. But this way, you know where you come and get it from? Right here at the Israel of God, and you will get fed all day long. Forgive me, God, God, man. I, I, I spilled tea on my pages. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they stick it, right? First Thessalonians 4. Yeah, 4. I got to get out of here now, boy. You ain't going to be able to get to the page. You're going to be stuck together. First Thessalonians 4 and, and verse 1. What did it say, bro? <laughs> Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. So we ought to know how to walk and please God. We don't have to guess and make up our own thing to serve God. It's already written. Just do what he tells you to do. Go ahead and read. For you know what commandment he gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Oh, this is the will of God? This is God's will. Don't do that fornication thing. Go ahead and read. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Ain't this something? How do you know that? Through the word of God. Let's go to St. John 17. We're running now. But hey, we got to know what that will of God is, people. St. John 17. Now, 17 and 15. 17 and 15. What did it say, my brother? St. John 17, 15. Yeah. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Go ahead. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. But so he don't want us to take us out of the world because where are we going to go? But he wants us to keep us from the evil. Go ahead and read. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Ooh, go ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. The will of God is true. Go ahead and read. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Yes. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. The only truth. Each of you sanctified and holy and full of the Holy Ghost. What sanctifies you, people? It's the truth. You sanctified, you don't know no truth. You don't know where the kingdom is. You don't know when the Sabbath day is. You don't know nothing about Israel, your own heritage. You don't know where the kingdom is going to be set up because you're not doing it according to the will of God, according to truth. And where is it at? From Genesis to Revelation. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Ephesians 5. We got two more after this, really one more after this. Ephesians 5, brother. And I'm going to turn it back over to you, Jews. I'm going to have to drop the mic. Ephesians 5 and verse 6. But people, we're just trying to warn you. We're trying to tell you how to love. Get with this will and be with God and don't let no man fool you. Take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall so deceive me. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 6, what did it say, my brother? Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. That's who the wrath will come on, huh? Because you ain't obedient, you disobedient. Go ahead and read. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Go ahead. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. 
Walk as children of light. Go ahead. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Go ahead. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Uh huh. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Go ahead and read. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Ooh, they're doing some things in secret we don't even want to speak on. Go ahead and read. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever do make manifest is light. That's right. That means bro, it's light and light is true. Go ahead and read. Wherefore he said, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. That's all you got to do. People wake up out of that darkness, out of that deep sleep and listen to the word of God and he'll give you light. Keep reading. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ain't they evil? You can't see that. But look what he said, though. Wherefore, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This is what he wants you to understand, people. And if you do that, you're going to be blessed. Understand what the will of the Lord is. 18, what did he say? And be not drunk with wine, where it is access. Go but ahead. be filled with the Spirit. Filled with what Spirit? The Word of God. Go yes. ahead and read. Speak it to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Yes, sir. Let's go to the last place. Now, let's go to Job 33. Job 33. But all it's been about people, the will of God. Not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, man, Ray. Oh, man, our, brother Ray. Our flesh is thy will is nothing. It's bad. It's and, sister, and sister, brother, while we turn to that Job, go back and watch this again. And watch it again, yeah. sisters and brothers. And, and, and Somebody needs this, Ray. And I want to thank you, brother, for bringing, for, I thank the Lord Jesus for putting this lesson in your mind and bringing this. Hey, it's the Lord's will. It's God's word. And I'm we're glad to be able to bring it and share it with my sisters and my brother. I got to do the same thing myself. Now. I see uh, you, coach. Uh, Job 33, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Whew. Job 33 and 15. And when you get it, this is the last scripture. Go ahead and read. What does it say, brother? Uh, you want that? Want to start that fourteen, brother? Yeah, if that's what you wanted to start right there, brother. For God speaketh once, yeah, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. Go ahead. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Man, he wants you to do his will so bad when you sleep. He's sitting in your instruction while you're sleeping. Yes. What did he say? What did he say? 17. That he may withdraw man from his purpose. Because your will going to get you cut off. He draw you back from your purpose. Go ahead. And hide pride from man. Uh-huh. He keep it back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Go ahead. He is chasing also with pain upon his bed and multitude of his bones with strong pain. Go ahead. So that his life abhorred bread and his soul dainty meats. Because you don't want to eat nothing but keep reading. This is how the Lord do his service. Go ahead. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen. And his bones that were not seen stick out. This people, somebody real sick here. Go ahead and read. Yes, yes, Ray. Yeah, his soul draws near to the grave and Go his life to the destroyer. Go ahead. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness. Then what the Lord do? Then he is gracious unto him and saith, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Go ahead. His flesh shall be, his flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Go ahead. He shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. Because he's going to render unto man his righteousness. He's going to read what you sow, people. But listen, I was trying to share with you the will of God, people. I don't want to serve God my way. I don't want to serve God your way. I want to serve God his way. And I may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn it back over to the host. Brother Ray, I'm at a loss for words, brother. All I can say was the Holy Spirit showed up. Praise the Lord, brother. I want to thank you for uh, for being here. Thank Brother Sean <laughs> for, for setting up everything. I want to thank the God of Israel for this magnificent, wonderful words of eternal life. Praise God, brother. And Praise I just want to, I'm just full, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I love you. And, love and you, continue to continue to, to, to as y'all show says, be brothers in the vineyard and bring yes. forth fruit, meat for repentance. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Jews. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, brother. I love you. Sisters and brothers, like, share, post, watch this again and again. Praise the Lord. And again. And as always, we'll see you next week on another episode of the Bob McGillead Bible Radio Show. In Jesus' name, good night. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Jeremiah 8, 20 through 22. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people and my hurt, I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no position there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The bomb of Gilead, give me the remedy. Father, correct my path. The bomb of Gilead, you all that I ever need and all that I ever had. The bomb of Gilead, don't keep on healing me. Father, please have my back. The bomb of Gilead, you all that we ever need and all that we ever had. There's drama in the streets that my people is dying. And I'm starting to lose sleep from all the grieving and crying. I don't trip because I believe it's kingdom design. The ambition shall be yours, you don't ever be lying. Unlike the false prophet and the reverend be lying. Talk about we going to heaven, not to earth when we dying. Oh, how you coming back full of rage and violence. Opposition and these critics will forever be silent. While Satan and his henchmen talk to the lake of fire. And you can't have anything your heart desire. Without no consequences, you know Satan a lie. Got you thinking we ain't got to keep the laws of the Bible. And he didn't have a bomb. Now we dead on arrival with a whip of fake mind that we can't revive. Him. Unable to get the false doctor from the side of him. I ain't never met a zombie till I stood beside him. The bomb of Gilead, give me the remedy.